Today I'm going to jump on here really quick to share with you all the technique I use in order for me to pass the tasting portion of the advanced level sommelier exam. If you are a consumer, this video might not relate to you very much, so feel free to scroll on or check out another one of my video. But if you're a student, either studying to uh, pass any level of your sommelier examination, or if you're joining any sommelier competition in the near future that has a tasting portion, please listen up, this might just help you. And today's video is inspired by Michael, so big shout out to you. I have nothing but love and hope you to do really well in your next examination. So in no particular order, let's go for it. First is, I hope you already have an established group of people that you're tasting with regularly, obviously. You wanna to continue to practice and get better. But the additional tip for you is to not get comfortable with the group that you're already tasting with, but reach out to different group, different mentor, different teachers. Taste with people that is in the quarter master sommelier world, from the master of wine world. Reach out to them, especially the ones that are local to you. Please do not be shy. A lot of those people want to help and they are willing to do it. And what's the worst that can happen? They say no. But you want to do it with as many different teachers as possible because they all have different different style, they all have different um, what they consider as classic region and classic varietal and they all have different things that they can teach you and you'll be uh, you'll be forced to teach in, uh, taste in different um, situation, environment, so it gets you used to tasting those different uh, environment and situation so you're less nervous during the exam day. The second thing is make sure you're tasting in different times of the day. So we are a biological being and our palate will have different, it will peak in different times of the day. I think generally we, uh, it's known to believe that in the beginning of the day, in the morning time, we have a sharper uh, palate than towards the end of the day. So you actually do want to try and taste a different time of the day and see how that affects you so you can calibrate your palate a little more. Now three is Let's just say if you're trying to go for the advanced level quarter master sommelier test, and that is a 25 minute uh, tasting portion that gives you about four minutes and 10 seconds per wine. You don't wanna get comfortable in just that pace. When you're doing your practice, do a couple runs where you're doing it in two minutes per wine. So for six wine, only give yourself 12 minutes. Again, the whole idea is to apply more pressure. So join the very like nerve wracking situation where you're in front of the, uh, the testing panel, you are more relaxed because you want to put yourself under just all this different environment and give yourself more pressure. Uh, so taste in a faster speed and also it kind of prevents yourself from overthinking things. We have to kind of come to, come, come to a conclusion quicker. Next, this is a really good one. Uh, if you have been practicing your tasting for a while, you may start to know this. There are certain wine varietal that is your Achilles heel. Certain couple wine varietal, certain region you always mix up. One of my friends, and I, I picked up this technique is you create a quote unquote lazy Susans of your Achilles wheel, um, Achilles heel. So if you have four varietal that you're having a hard time tell apart, you put them on a tiny little lazy Susan, just pour four of them, tape the answer on the bottom of your glass, just as you're working or doing whatever, watching TV, hopefully you're not, but doing whatever it is you're doing in the middle of the day, you have this four glass of wine sitting on a lazy Susan and you just casually spin it. And whenever you feel like, just pick up one of the glass and smell it and try to see if you can recognize what it is and then see if you got it right. If not, put it back and just keep doing it because you're repeatedly uh, exposing yourself to the same few varietal that you are having a hard time with and hopefully eventually you'll be able to taste the difference. Uh, the other thing that I find very helpful is on exam day before you actually go in and start your tasting when your palate is completely fresh you wanted to actually do what we call the exam day mouthwash you combine just a couple of random high acid white wine you know sparkling wine Sauvignon Blanc Chablis um, you just combine them into a tiny little shot and you want to put it in your mouth and you rinse it and you spit it back out the reason for doing that is without anything in your mouth and the uh, in the beginning of the day or before you're tasting the first one you're gonna taste your mouth is gonna be a little uh, calibrated to low um, to be more sensitive to acid so the first one you're gonna taste is gonna feel more acidic than um, than the rest so in order to kind of um, neutralize that we do a little quick mouth wash so your mouth has already kind of been shocked it 
I find that very, very helpful. The next thing is be really mindful of the wine temperature. So during the exam day, obviously the wines are being kept in an ice bucket. So it depending on how much time has lapsed between the examiner pour, pulling your wine versus when you're actually starting your test, the wine temperature could be slightly too cold or slightly too hot. So make sure you are looking at a glass and you're feeling kind of the temperature of the wine with your hand. Because as you know, when the white wine is too cold, you are going to think they are leaner and higher acid than they are. And when they're too warm, it's going to feel a little flabby and higher alcohol than you want them to be. So be very mindful of the wine temperature and practice at home so you know um, kind of how wine changes through different temperature. The next thing you might want to do is to record yourself when you're tasting and listen back. You will catch yourself with a certain filler word and things that you do or um, that you can cut off and be better at if you just watch yourself taste. When I was uh, studying for my exam, one of the things I like to say is definitely, and I've been called out on it many times from different masters. I definitely smell some strawberry in this wine. And people was like, definitely? Like, just cut it off. Just say, hey, I got strawberry, I got cherry. You're saving yourself some time and you're not cornering yourself because again, wine is subjective. There's definitely nothing definite in any glass of wine, right? So things like that, or you might catch yourself to do uns, uns, or doing extra movement that you really don't need to that could save you precious time in the exam situation. All right, last but not least, I think the most, most, most important part is, again, we are a physical being that we're different every day. Just remember on your tasting day, depending on your mindset, you will perform, uh, perform differently. If you're nervous, you're not going to perform well. If you're worried about how you did the day before, you're not going to do well. So hopefully, if you haven't already established a routine or something that will get you to your zen. For me at the time was to listen to classical music. When I was taking my advanced level test, uh, it, it was very fashionable or essentially when we were getting to the lobby, getting ready to be called in to do our tasting, I would see different candidates going into small groups and they're talking about the day before. Hey, uh, what did you answer for this theory question? How did you do the service exam? Why does it matter? It's already happen and for you to focus your energy on it and be nervous about things that you can change already happened in the past it's not going to help you with the exam you're about to take in 10 minutes so what i did is i put on my headphone and i go to the corner just by myself listen to my favorite classical music and really get myself to a calm peaceful place before my name was called before i walk in for the exam so i can perform my best all right that's all the tips and, and, and technique I have for you. I wish you good luck. And hey, if you're one of the students or you've already passed or you're in the process of passing your exam, please leave a comment below and tell me your favorite tip or your favorite uh, thing to do in order for you to prep and become a better taster when it comes to exam time. If you wanted to learn more and watch more videos related to this, please go onto my website on www.angiesong.com and subscribe to my mailing list and feel free to shop my exclusive deal as well. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.